Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are playing as William the Conqueror, King of England. Alright, so in today's episode, of course, we're going to be dealing with this rebellion uh, where we tried to arrest the young Duchess of Mercia. And, uh, of course, she wasn't arrested and she rebelled instead. And now we have to uh, defeat her and her allies, which I wasn't expecting her to pull in. Uh, some of the allies that she did, including the, uh, the Duke over here, uh, the Duke Frederick. Uh, so, I'm going to put down this rebellion. We have allies that are coming. Uh, we have, uh, of course, Brittany's coming. And then, I don't know if the Danish will make it here or not. And I don't expect the Holy Roman Empire to help us, because it does look like they are dealing with some of their own issues. Uh, so, we probably won't uh, see them coming. Uh, but Brittany does seem to be on their way. 1,200, almost 1,300 troops. However, before we play and and do this war, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take care of our, our dungeon. Uh, we have four people. This can get stacked up really quick in a in a war, so I try and deal with it as I as I see it. Uh, or as we get him, I mean. So with this guy here, we will ransom him. Yeah, 10 gold. Uh, kind of help us out. We are losing gold right now. Uh, and then with this mayor, I think we're gonna keep him uh, because he's a military engineer and I don't really want the Duke making use of him uh, to siege down our provinces quicker. Uh, this guy here, this is the peasant leader. Peasant leaders are actually pretty decent. Uh, you know, they have a good uh, martial skill, uh, a decent prowess. And so I feel like we could keep him. Uh, he is angry. Uh, maybe we should maybe we should wait till he let him out. Let's let him cool off a little bit. Uh, we'll put him in, he's already in house arrest. So we'll leave him in house arrest for a little while. And uh, maybe we'll look at recruiting him. Uh, this uh, woman here, she's the one that got arrested for fornicating. And there's really no reason uh, to keep her in here. We're going to let her out so she go take care of her, her child. Uh, so uh, let's just ransom her for a, a favor. All right, excellent. And she is terrified of us. I guess that's fitting because the fact that we have her in our prison. Uh, so we need to split this army up uh, because it is overneath the, or excuse me, it is above the supply limit for most of the provinces here. So just looking at uh, what our supply limit is, uh, we could probably fit about 4,000 in most provinces, uh, except for some of the lower supply places in the uh, enemy lands, but we will just try and avoid those. Uh, so let's go ahead and split this off and uh, create two separate armies. One of them is going to be a sieging army while the other one will be our fighting army. All right, this looks good. Uh, there are a lot of loud cars going by right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, move these guys after that army. I feel like our 3500 should be able to beat their 3500 uh, with our elite uh, quality here. So let's go this way and then, oh, yeah, we're gonna take attrition that way. I don't think we're gonna be able to avoid attrition. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Uh, let's go ahead and have these guys go after the capital now. We will want to go ahead and give them a commander. And again, we will prefer a commander who's good at sieging, but it, I don't think we I don't think we have any. Nah, we don't have any. So we'll just go after... Let's go after this guy. Yeah, that's fine. He's our best one. Uh, so uh, we should have ourselves yeah, in control of the main army. And we're going to chase this uh, enemy army down and... That alone might be enough uh, to get the win here. Uh, so that'll get us 10 gold. Gain the hook there, excellent. So we'll chase them down and, and once we take the capital, uh, the Dutchess will be there. And whenever you siege down a capital, oh no. Okay, so Count William, that's interesting. Uh, he has more provinces of English uh, more English provinces, and so therefore he has, hmm, it's interesting, because yeah, he's here, he wouldn't have English provinces, he had normal provinces, and we are English, okay, that's strange, uh, that he would take over here, okay, I'm not entirely sure, uh, why that changed, interesting, uh, but yeah, when you siege down, the enemy provinces, uh, the enemy capital, I should say. Uh, it does look like we will win here. It's going to be close, though. This will be a close battle. Uh, we could end up losing just because they outnumber us a little bit. But that's okay. Uh, there's also no, uh, because we're in the plains, there's not going to be any uh, you know, defensive benefit there. So we're going to do this battle here. 
And what is this? Virtuous Prince Bishop celebrated, so uh, Catholicism fervor did increase. Let's watch this battle. Uh, but what I was saying uh, about the sieges is when you siege down the capital, you have a chance to capture anybody who's there. Uh, so, for instance, if somebody was sieged down our capital, uh, they wouldn't be able to capture us because we are in the army. But they would be able to capture any children we have that are in our court, uh, as well as our wife uh, as, and, and any uh, courtiers. They could capture them as well. There's also the chance that in a siege, uh, a person is killed rather than captured. It's a rare chance. It doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. Uh, so the Duchess, you know, obviously she's not leading her troops because she's like, you know, six years old or something like that. So she is going to be here. So there's a chance we can capture. And if we do, then that's the end of the war. And, and, and we won't take very long to, to take that either. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very close battle, guys. Uh, we could even lose it. It looks like we're going to win it. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be super, super close. And our allies are coming, so it's going to ensure that we win it. Uh, Prince Robert has finished up increasing control in uh, Winchester, so we need to assign another one. And I'm just looking at the battles here that are happening again. I really like following the night battles. It really adds just so much character to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and move him back to increasing control. I, I guess I should take a look and see where we want to increase control. We're at 95 there, so that might be enough. Uh, we're close enough that it'll probably do it it's uh get to it on its own i'm thinking we should do that province there yeah uh we almost have full control over our lands excellent all right so let's continue watching this battle and seeing how things go here yeah we're definitely gonna win uh and we also got our allies here so that helps quite a bit uh, i think we would have won uh, even if uh Brittany hadn't come to our assistance uh, but it would have been a lot closer. We would have took more casualties. Uh, so we finished the siege here. And so that did result in us taking the Duchess' mother. Which, remember, she's the Duchess' heir. So that's going to uh, drastically increase our war score. You see that? We're getting a plus 50% because we captured her heir. Uh, so you always want to go after the enemy capital in a war, in a conflict. Go after the capital first before you go after anything else. With one exception. If you're going after a claim, uh, then you'll get a ticking war score uh, once you get the claim that you're going after. Good God, the vehicles today, man. I'll have to cut all those out because they're, they're quite loud. Uh, but, yeah, once you uh, uh, capture the claim, you'll get the ticking war score. So if you're going after a claim, then that'd be the one exception where you'd want to... Uh, oh, the mayor died. Uh, where you'd want to go after that province instead of the, the capital. Uh, so we captured some enemy combatants. We'll take a look at that here in a second. We're at 98%, so it won't be much longer, guys. Uh, we could chase this guy down. I think the better option would be just go after a siege. Probably one that's going to get us uh, the most loot, since it doesn't matter where we take. Uh, wherever we take, we'll, uh, uh, you know, we'll get the, the win. I'm saying the 23 gold here is probably the best one, so that's one we're going to go after. Uh, so William here, I, I suppose he'll he'll come up here to to protect uh, this army to make sure that they don't attack us. But I'm, I'm not going to chase that army down. Uh, we do want to take a look at the battle though. Uh, see what happened here. We'll see how all of our troops did. Uh, our knights killed 556 uh, people. Uh, they lost two of them. We lost two knights, guys. Uh, their knights killed 333, and uh, they didn't didn't lose any of them. So basically, our knights seemed like they didn't do very well in the uh, one on one battles. Uh, the levies uh, took a lot of casualties, as you'd expect. Uh, their light horsemen did pretty well. And our light horsemen also did pretty well. And you can see exactly what phase they do this in. Uh, so on the pursuit, we're not really killing very many men. Uh, so with the knights, I want to see the exact events. We'll, we'll take a look at who died. Uh, David. I don't remember who David was, but he's dead. And uh, Mayor Hugh as well also died. Uh, let's take a look at who see, see who killed who, because these are all our people too. There was this one guy who's actually pretty decent. Uh, Rufin, uh, he killed two people. You can see that there were some uh, other battles where people were injured as well. I want to see if like uh, anybody we know well, our, na our nephew, looks like he was injured. Yeah, twice. Okay. All right. Good to know. Let's go and dismiss that. And we'll go ahead and uh, working on getting this last uh, province taken. And again, that will be the end of the conflict. Yeah, there's no reason to chase these guys down. We really didn't need to call all of our allies in. As I said, we didn't need to, but why not? Uh, you know, 
If they're willing to accept it, cost a little bit of prestige to pull them in. We're doing pretty good on prestige. We actually just ranked up our fame level. We're now illustrious, which is going to get us an extra knight and more secular opinion. So they are going to come back down here. Uh, we're back to being the culture head. Okay, I don't know why uh, that happened, guys. That was strange. Uh, but that does result in us having to change this again. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how he sees the cultural head uh, when he's down here and all his provinces are or Norman. Yeah, very, very strange overall. Uh, so yeah, they're going to try and take this capital back, I assume. And with that, we have one. Uh, so let's go ahead and it looks like it's still playing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, finish this this conflict up. We're going to enforce our demands. We're going to impri imprison the Duchess. We'll gain 28 dread from this. Uh, we'll also be imprisoning the two uh, other vassals, the Earl and the Duke here, who rebelled against us. It's going to enforce our demands. All right, fantastic. So the war is over. Well, let's go ahead and we don't have the option to do this because we're involved in the conflict. Uh, so let's go ahead and disband them here since the little uh, button didn't pop up here because they want us to go help out in our, our uh, vassal, or excuse me, our allies uh, conflict over here. Uh, but we are not going to assist with that. I call for my vassals or for my allies to assist, but I don't assist them. I'm a great ally, guys. Uh, we assist them when it makes sense to. I'm not gonna sail all the way over there though. So uh, now we need to to deal with our new prisoners. Uh, so we now have seven prisoners here. Uh, so let's deal with the the easier ones, uh, the ones that. Uh, uh, so of course we have that guy still. Uh, this this guy here. Uh, we'll go ahead and release him now. Let's see if we can get a little bit of money. We can get 27. He doesn't have the 30 gold. That would uh, be the maximum we can get from him. Uh, we have the Earl here. He's uh, one of the ones that rebelled on us. No, he did not rebel on us. Uh, he, he rebelled because his his uh, duchess, his liege, uh, rebelled. Uh, so might be a little bit more lenient with him since he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't want to rebel like the uh, the other Earl. It was these three here that willingly rebelled against us. Uh, so we could just ransom him off 50 gold. I'm not going to take anything from him. And uh, then we have this prisoner who is really good at learning. Pretty decent learning. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, we can go and ransom him for 10 gold. Just a little something, something. All right, so let's go ahead and get those ones all done first. And then we'll uh, mess with the three main vassals who uh, actually rebelled on us. And get all this all this lovely lovely gold and as I posted in my pinned comment what we're gonna be doing with our gold uh, here is that we're going to continue building up our, our men at arms uh, I want to get the men in arms at a good level uh, as long as we have the, the money to pay for them which we do uh, so we're gonna build them up just a little bit more maybe get the bowmen built built up more or we could just get a fourth unit so th these uh uh, men at arms are, are absolutely fantastic. They're, they're very expensive, as you see. They're the most expensive option we have here. Now they are heavy infantry, which means that they're counted by the light footmen. And uh, as I said before, I typically don't see armored footmen in the heavy infantry to be all that useful until a little bit later in the game, uh, simply because uh, of the fact that all the AI uses the, the skirmishes. So therefore, they just uh, counter your your heavy infantry. Uh, so I don't typically get them early on because every time I have I found them to not be that effective uh, until again until much much later uh, and, and then they're great for for countering these these spearmen uh, but with these guys here they are far superior than the regular old heavy infantry first of all they counter two different types of units spearmen and archers uh, so technically you don't need you know horsemen to, to counter the archers uh, which we already have and we're planning on keeping them again we keep those those horse the horsemen for the the pursuit and the screening uh, pursuit is your ability to chase down enemies uh, when you've already won the battle and kill kill them get extra kills while the screening is your ability to protect your own troops when you are retreating when you you have lost the battle so they have that advantage that they counter two different types of units uh, in addition to that they also have a plus eight damage and these two terrain types, uh, which the armored footmen do not have. Uh, and then finally, you're going to notice that just their base stats uh, are better as well. You're looking at 42 and 26. Uh, so that's quite a bit more. Yeah, it's quite helpful. 
So I think we're going to get them, even though they're a bit more expensive, and uh, I don't typically get the the uh, heavy infantry this early. Uh, we're going to get them. Uh, we have the money, so we're going to pay for that. Uh, we'll be able to upgrade them any further. Uh, but, but I think we want to get about four men-at-arms units, uh, maybe five, and then we'll start working on building uh, provinces, constructing provinces. And the reason why I'm focusing on the military before the economy, which typically you want to do the other one first, is you need your economy to be secure in order to pay for your, your military. And the reason why I'm focusing on, on the military first is because we don't really have that many many troops uh, overall. Uh, so we have a lot of enemies and not a lot of troops. And, and plus, again, we have the uh, a lot of the land is in control of our vassals. So we don't have uh, as much as much men as I'd like. So that's the reason why we're, we're focusing on getting those men-at-arms for, for conflicts. Uh, so we can kind of uh, you know make people do what we want. So now that we've uh, uh, done that and we've, done with, we've, we've dealt with all the lower level. I'm just letting this play for a little bit to make sure that all those offers went in. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and deal with the last three of these uh, uh, prisoners have, which of course are the uh, the actual vassals that rebelled against us. Let's see what we want to do with them. Uh, so we could, of course, take their titles, but then we just had to grant them to somebody else. And this guy actually likes us. I'm at, I'm actually really surprised uh, that that some of these people rebelled. I'm not entirely sure why they did. The only thing I could think of is that they were allied with her, but I don't know how they'd be allied with her because you don't have anybody to, to arrange marriages for. And so I really don't know why they rebelled on us. That was quite strange because we had high opinion with both of these. I mean, Duke Frederick loved us. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. We're going to give them an opportunity to uh, to be forgiven. And of course, we're going to take the, the gold. That's the, the payment for, for uh, you know, rebelling. Uh, but with this guy, we will we'll get the gold. Uh, the 50 gold, but I think with Duke, Duke Frederick, I think it might be better uh, instead to get a, a hook on him. Yeah, I think that'd be far better, and then I'll show you what, what we're going to do with that weak hook afterwards. Uh, and then with her, of course, we already know what we're going to be doing with her. We're going to be revoking her titles. Uh, we already decided we're going to do the Duchy of Mercia. And of course, because she rebelled, uh, she is you know a known criminal for rebelling against us. Uh, so therefore we can take her title without getting any extra tyranny now we already did get a tyranny hit which we should see somewhere here i'm not seeing it on her maybe it'll be on other uh vassals you know i'm a little surprised that she doesn't have the the tyranny hit we'll take a look at another vassal and see because uh, it should be a negative 20 uh, because we, we attempted to arrest her all right so uh let's go ahead and do this and of course she she cannot rebel <laughs> on us because she's in her prison and that'll take one of her titles away from her, the duchy title, and we'll get the two counties that, that were there. And uh, you know she's gonna she's gonna hate us for that. So let's go and give it a few moments to get those two offers in, get these back, and get these guys released. All right, fantastic. So what we're gonna do now is with that hook, we're gonna have a little notification up here uh, somewhere. That we can modify our contracts. Of course, one of them is our son, which we have already decided not to do. I don't. I'm not going to make him pay any extra. So with uh, the Duke here, we could keep the uh, the hook on him, uh, but we're not going to. It's a weak hook, so it doesn't like stop him from acting against us or anything like that. Only the strong hook will do that. Uh, so with the weak hook, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to force him to give us more levies. Uh, we could do taxes, but when it comes to the the feudal lords here, they just don't give you much money. Uh, it's just not a lot, especially early on here in the game. Uh, they just don't generate very much money, uh, so it's just far better to, uh, you know, if you're going to take an opinion hit. It's the same opinion hit either way, negative 15. Uh, so you're getting negative 15 for, you know, 0.1 gold per month. Uh, that's all that's increasing. That's really not worth it. Uh, so instead, we want to do levies. That's what we're going to be doing. There are other options available that we have. You can turn it on March. That's not uh, a negative one, though. Uh, so we don't have to use a, a hook for that one. Uh, you could give him uh, different rights here. We could force him to partition, but he's already going to be having par uh, partition. So yeah, there's a lot of different rights you could do here. Some of these are positive ones that they like and uh, will increase their opinion. And we are going to use the hook here because you notice that if we don't, it's going to cause tyranny. So we're going to modify that and now we'll be getting a little bit more levies from him. So we still have the Dutch's in our prison. Uh, we haven't let her out yet, 
and I don't think we're going to either. Uh, so now she she owns a lot less land, uh, but she's going to hate us for a long time, uh, and eventually she's going to uh, you know become old. You know, ten years from now she'll be old enough that she's going to be our most powerful vassal, uh, and she's going to demand a position on the council. And if she's good, then maybe we'll let her out, and uh, she's just going to be growing up in house arrest. And uh, if she's really good, then, you know, hopefully she will no longer be angry at us, and maybe we'll let her out. And she can become a uh, one of our, our counselors. Uh, again, it's going to be largely based on both if I want to, to, to put her in that position. Uh, otherwise, I don't see any reason to, to let her out. Uh, why would we let her out? She rebelled. She has not been a good vassal. And of course, we get a little bit of money from her uh, if we were to uh, to ransom her, but that's just not... Not worth it, I don't feel. So we're going to be keeping her in there. Uh, so our new lands that we just got are, of course, the Duchy of Mercia. Now, this does leave us with uh, four duchies now. And so we're going to be getting a larger hit. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to give us a lot more uh, a lot more vassals uh, that are underneath us now. And overall, she's just uh, quite a bit less powerful. Uh, we are one... Uh, county above our domain, so we're going to have to give one of them up. Uh, the three counties that we got are Nottingham uh, and Shrewsbury, and I, I don't ever remember how to pronounce that. I think it's like Leicester or something like that. I, I could be mispronouncing that, though. Correct me, because uh, I, I almost always mispronounce that one. Uh, overall, I, every time I play as uh, England, whether uh, it's playing in EU4 uh, or I'm playing as uh, United Kingdom in, in Hearts of Iron 4, I always had that, that misconception that I'm going to, like, finally be able to pronounce uh, the characters' names and the, the provinces. And it turns out, of course, that British English is very, very different to American English, and so I mispronounce everything, probably even worse uh, in, in here in an English country than I do uh, in, uh, like, let's say, Germany or, or France. I do I do even worse here. Uh, the only thing I can pronounce fine is, is, is Spanish, because I took Spanish in college. I had to do four semesters of Spanish. Uh, I still don't speak Spanish, uh, despite doing four semesters, got A's in all four classes, uh, and I still don't really speak Spanish. Uh, I, I speak it a, a little bit, uh, but I definitely wouldn't call myself uh, fluent in it. So we have three uh, counties, we have to get rid of one of them. Uh, let's see which one we want to get rid of. Uh, of course their control is going to be low in some of them. This one particularly is pretty darn low. Uh, let's see here. I'm thinking that we'll probably keep this one. Yeah, I think we might end up keeping this one and then getting rid of one of these two. Yeah, I think we might get rid of this one. That one might be for the best. Let me look at the development here. Yeah, yeah this is the, the lowest development. Uh, I think that's the one we're gonna get rid of. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, so we gotta find somebody to grant it to. Uh, I don't actually, had it. I didn't have anybody lined up for this. Well, you know what we could do? We could get rid of this duchy title uh, because we have quite a few duchy titles now. But what I really want to do is start handing out uh, some titles to our sons. Uh, so what I wanted to, to do here last episode, and I started talking about it, and I completely forgot uh, what I was doing. I got sidetracked. Is that we are going to go ahead and disinherit uh, Robert. Uh, so Robert you know, did not become king of England historically. And that's because his, his father hated him. William and Robert did not get along. They absolutely hated each other. Uh, you know, Robert and, and, uh, rebelled against William several times. Uh, and they, they even fought on the battlefield. And Robert almost killed William uh, in a battle until he realized it was his father. He didn't know it was his father at the time. But he did injure him quite badly uh, in the battle. So uh, they, they just did not get along. So there's a reason why uh, Robert did not get uh, the throne of England. And, and the other part of it is that he was already the, the Duke of uh, Normandy and William wanted to keep the two realms separate. Uh, now the nobles did not like that idea. Uh, the uh, Norman nobles thought it was a terrible plan because they knew that Robert uh, here in Normandy and then of course William uh, who would succeed in England, that uh, they hated each other, that uh, they did not get along at all. And so, and there's a lot of reasons. Uh, there, there's a, a story though, this prank that was pulled uh, on Robert by uh, William and Henry, where they, they dumped like a full chamber pot on them. This is disgusting, though, and you can see why Robert might not like his brothers after that. Uh, but overall, he just didn't get along with the rest of his brothers. So the nobles knew that they couldn't be, they wouldn't be able to appease both Robert and William, and yet they had lands, many of them had lands both in England and in France. 
And so, so the problem was, was how are you going to, you know, keep both of your lords happy when your two lords hate each other and are fighting wars against each other? As I said before, uh, Henry, the youngest son, was helping, uh, helping William fight against Robert. And uh, that's eventually uh, how Robert ended up getting, getting imprisoned. Uh, Henry imprisoned him, uh, captured him in battle and, and uh, put him in prison. And, and that's where he spent the rest of his life. So the uh, lords actually supported Robert. Uh, they, but they, the point is, is that they wanted the two two thrones united. Uh, so that kind of caused a lot of strife between the two brothers as well. Uh, but because William didn't like Robert, and we are playing as William, uh, it makes sense for us to disinherit him. Uh, because that's what he did historically, and, you know, again, I can see why he didn't like him. Uh, he is very lazy. That is what he's known as, uh, is that he was a very, very lazy guy. Uh, while he was brave in battle and uh, competent as a military commander, uh, he was just, as a, as a ruler, just really, really lazy. Uh, liked to, you know, liked to party and enjoy himself. And just not a good, not a good ruler. Uh, so that's another reason to disinherit him. And you can see from the stats that they're, they're just not very impressive. Uh, he's all right Marshall, of course. Uh, that's just average, though. Uh, he's got good prowess. Uh, but yeah, just not not great. Uh, so what I think we should do is disinherit him. Now, this is not something you want to use all the time, guys. It's not a good uh, you know method for, for dealing with your, your children, especially, you know, as I've sometimes done, I'll use it to make sure that all my titles go in the hands of, of one of my children. And you don't want to do that too much of because uh, the disinheriting, which is only a, you're only able to do that if you are the dynasty head. Now, I, don't, I think house head might be able to do it uh, for people in their house, but I might be wrong about that because I think I've always been dynasty head rather than house head. I haven't played as, as just the house head before, uh, so I'm not sure if they have this ability or not. Uh, but this does cost your renown, and the renown is used for... Uh, getting the legacies. Uh, so that's one thing to consider, guys, is that if you spend your renown, you go spend in all of your renown, uh, then you won't be able to get legacies. Uh, so uh, just to kind of show what that is, let's go back to our, our character here. Uh, these are the legacies here. They're pretty expensive, about 1,000 just for the first one, 1,000 renown. And these follow your, your dynasty for the entire game. It's pretty much the only thing that you have that always follows with you and you never lose. You know, when it comes to, to characters, of course, you know, they die. That's the only thing they have is, is relevant in the long-term game. Uh, when it comes to lands, you lose them. Uh, you're not going to end the, the, the game with the same lands you started with, more than likely. Uh, so all of that stuff is, is fluid. Uh, but the only thing that isn't fluid is, is the legacies. So it is very good to invest in these because it's going to help, uh, you know, every member of your dynasty. That's also something to consider, though, because if you have, like, rivals in your dynasty, then, then it's affecting them, too. Uh, so I do want to, to get legacies. So if we do this consistently, guys, uh, you know, use this ability, then we're not going to be able to get legacies because it's expensive. It's 225, guys. We only have 399 right now. So we're going to disinherit him, uh, and he's going to hate us for us. And again, that makes that makes sense. We're going to do this. And we're not actually really stopping him from inherit much. She was going to get this county right here. That's, that's the only thing we've uh, kept him from with that disinheriting. Uh, and he's, you know, still, you know, a powerful noble. Uh, so we still have to keep in our council. And he still likes us quite about, uh, quite a bit, despite that. That just shows you how much uh, he liked us uh, with all these uh, bonuses that we're we were getting here. Uh, so now we have a new heir, and that is Prince Richard. Uh, Prince Richard uh, does have some penalties here. He's also sick. Uh, looks like his wife is already pregnant, so we know that he's going to have an heir. So that's good. As far as his traits go, I think he's got some interesting traits that will be fun to play play as. Uh, his skills are a little bit better than his brother, although not quite as good in martial and prowess. Um, part of that is because he's sick, uh, but even then, his his prowess is considerably lower. And uh, then we also have our other uh, son, who was the one who actually, of course, succeeded because uh, historically Richard died in a hunting accident. Yes, that dreaded hunting accident event in CK2 is actually based on history. Now, a lot of rulers and a lot of heirs died in hunting accidents. Uh, so then we have William Rufus. And overall, he's the best of our sons. Uh, but the question is, will he be able to have any children? So let's answer that question by finding him a marriage and seeing uh, if he's he's able to have some kids 
with his wife. Now, because we don't want any more alliances, and uh, I mean, we're pretty good when it comes to alliances, and you know, we don't know if we're gonna play as him, so you know, I'm not too worried about inheritance either. And, and again, there's really nobody that I could think of that I'd want to uh, arrange a marriage with. Nobody within our own lands that I think we need to arrange a marriage with. I guess we take a look at the factions. Yeah, no problems here uh, with factions. So I think we're just going to find somebody for them uh, that would result in a good, uh, good children. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the same thing that we did with with his brother, basically. Uh, so let's find him somebody decent. Uh, maximum age 25. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, and then probably no larger age difference than maybe 10. No, no, no. That would make her possibly 11. I think that'd be too, too young. Let's just do five. And then fertility, obviously we want to be fertile, we want to be healthy, and we're looking for inheritable traits here. Uh, so that's not going to leave a lot of options. Uh, looks like we got two, one of them's lowborn, and uh, one of them is Danish, and these are the comely trait. This will make our people more attractive, maybe. And we'll just see who she is. Her father's in, in prison. Uh, she doesn't, she has one sibling. Okay. And does he have any, he doesn't have any titles. Let's say we could remove him and then she would gain the title. And yeah, she has decent stats too. Uh, she'd be useful as a wife. Uh, so that's who we're going to arrange the marriage with. Uh, William will lose uh, prestige. His, this is not a, a prestigious marriage, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and send off that proposal. Again, we're just you know, doing the breeding game here. We're getting him an attractive wife. And her being attractive would make it more likely uh, that they might be able to have a baby. Because remember, he... Uh, doesn't really like the ladies, uh, but of course, uh, anything that's going to improve, improve fertility would help. Uh, so we actually now have a different situation in our uh, uh, in our council, and that's probably because uh, you know we had changed all these up when we had that rebellion. So that does resu result in uh, Earl Robert. He is not a powerful vassal, and neither oh we have two Earl Roberts. Uh, so uh, these two are not powerful vassals. Uh, so let's take a look at the two powerful vassals that we do have that want positions. So we have the uh, countess here. Uh, see if she's good at anything. She's not. She is just a countess, so I'm not really too worried about her. Yeah, not too worried about her at all. Uh, so we probably won't appoint her. Uh, let's take a look at the other character, Earl Edric the Wild. Uh, he is actually a pretty good marshal. So maybe we'll appoint him, uh, but that would result in us having to move Prince Robert to somewhere, and he's really not good at anything else. This is what we're going to do. We're going to give it a little bit of time before we mess with that, uh, because this might update itself again now that we have like the Duke over here, and he's not in prison. I would assume he's going to become a uh, powerful vassal again. And another thing that might adjust the current situation with powerful nobles is that we're going to be giving our son a title finally. Uh, we're going to give Richard a title. Uh, especially now that you know he's got a baby on the way, he's got a family to take care of. We need to give him some some means of earning money. Although, oh yeah, we're gonna be uh, limited on what we do here. Uh, I can't give him the the title that I want to give him. Damn it! I hate that the the game does that. Uh, CK2 did that too. Uh, that you can't pick what title you want your sons to get. Uh, so like, I want him to get Kent here. And that is not an option because he's not set to inherit Kent. It's not the way I wanted to do it. I wanted him to get Kent. Uh, we'll just have to, you know, roll with what, what we're allowed to do here. Okay, so we actually don't have a choice on which one of the counties we want to give him. Oh, here we go. All right, so now it's opened up. Excellent. All right, so now we can give him a, a wider variety of counties. Still can't give him the Duchy of Kent, which I don't know why it's now called Petty Kingdom. That's interesting. Uh, instead of Duchy. Uh, but we still can't give him that, but we do have a, the ability to give him. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I got mad when I selected that. Let's go ahead and try this again. I'm assuming that's because he wasn't supposed to get that one. Okay, so we can't give him that one for whatever reason. That's probably one of his brothers is supposed to inherit that one. Although it really shouldn't let you select it. You know what I mean? That's kind of odd. So we'll do these two, and then we're going to do the Petty Kingdom of Mercia, and grant him all of that. Alright, excellent. So we now are below our domain holding limit. 
and we have given Prince Richard some titles. Uh, most importantly, this is going to uh, result in him, you know, again, he's going to earn more money, he's going to earn more prestige, more piety, all that good stuff. Uh, so it's very, very good. Now, with our youngest son, we're going to at least let him do this marriage real quick. Uh, but I don't know what to give him. I don't really have anything for him right now. Which I guess is fitting. Uh, historically, uh, Henry I was William's youngest son. And he didn't get anything either. Uh, he just got money in his inheritance. Uh, of course, he eventually became the king. Uh, now that this guy doesn't like us, we might want to ally him now. Uh, so let's go ahead and negotiate an alliance with him. And he is willing to accept that. And that's going to keep him from from joining any factions, uh, you know, perhaps to try and put himself on the throne, uh, because, you know, he's not going to be inheriting anything now. And we did not uh, sway Earl Odo, unfortunately. Okay, um, well, I wonder why the Earl hasn't arranged a marriage for himself. That's strange. You'd think he would have uh, by this point, but yeah, he never did. Never did arrange marriage. Uh, we don't have anybody that we can arrange marriage for him. Oh, okay, we need to do that. Yeah, we don't we don't have any women. Okay, uh, we can only marry him to our daughter. Well, never mind then. So, let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's let's give it another month and see if there's any adjustments. And we have increased control there. Excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and and uh, change out our uh, our steward because uh, the duke has finally been uh, given back his powerful vassal status and that's what I was waiting on guys Because remember he has that 23 stewardship so it's absolutely fantastic uh, this guy here yeah, he's not really good at anything else so yeah unfortunately we're just gonna have to take the opinion hit from firing him all right excellent he, he absolutely loves us again exactly as we want it now uh, the other powerful vassal is still Earl Edric. Uh, Earl Edric is a really good marshal. Uh, he could actually, I suppose he could do this job fine. It's such a bummer that our son is is overall fairly garbage at everything uh, other than the, the marshal. Yeah, I think we'll just have to keep things as they are. We're gonna keep this guy in control here. Uh, and I don't think we have anybody that's better. Yeah, there's nobody uh, better at this job. All right, so uh, we did finish up increasing control in I think it was here. Uh, so let's go ahead and increase control. Well, we can increase it uh, here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Let's go and increase it right there. Now we could, of course, give this. Yeah, let's go ahead and have him do that. Uh, did he not finish his job? Oh, he didn't finish. It's back down to 99. Okay, well, it's fine. It'll uh, increase on its own here uh, in, in about a month. Uh, but uh, we could give that to our son since it is in his duchy although it wasn't letting me do that before oh yeah uh, also looks like Earl Edric is, is converted to, to English uh, but also I forgot I wanted to convert the culture here uh, because remember it's now Norman uh, and it's causing us, causing us issues so what we need to do is convert that however we're currently doing development is that 13 uh, we can stop it at any time and I think we're going to go ahead and wait until it gets to 14. And when it gets to 14, then we'll change it up and work on converting them to English. So what we need to do now is just have a period of peace where we build our, our army back up. Uh, our army numbers are nowhere near what they could be. Uh, so we're going to build our army back up. Oh, and Constance can marry. Oh, yes, we haven't married her off yet. I, I think she's the only, the only one that doesn't have a marriage yet. Uh, but yeah, as you guys can see here, this does increase our fertility. Uh, so 10%, I don't know that that's going to help, uh, you know, when he doesn't like the ladies. But but if he does his duty, as he should, then we should have some children here. And uh, we do need to arrange a marriage for Constance, and that's it. Everybody else has a marriage arranged. Uh, so let's go ahead and find Constance a husband. Uh, she is uh, pretty skilled overall, uh, she, or she has good, I should say she has decent diplomacy. Uh, that's it. She's vengeful, arrogant, and fickle. Okay. Well, she's going to be, she'll be a rough wife uh, for somebody. Yeah. Quite the rough wife. Changing her mind all the time, extremely arrogant and vengeful. Yeah. Uh, she And she's a good negotiator too. Uh, so, 
she's gonna be a rough wife for somebody. So I feel sorry for for the guy that we uh, arranged this marriage with. Uh, looking for yeah, again, I don't really feel like we need any more alliances. Uh, the problem with alliances is that they, they drag you into conflicts. Uh, so I don't feel like we need any more alliances. And uh, we could, of course, try and... If we can get a matrilineal marriage, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to see if there's anybody who's willing to do a matrilineal marriage for Constance uh, who happens to have uh, you know, this a person who might be able to inherit a throne if, say, their older brothers were removed. Uh, and then maybe we can do a hostile scheme. Uh, so let's go ahead and find a spouse. And the way we'd want to do this is we'd want to base it off alliance power. And what else do we need to do? Oh, yes, matrilineal marriage. We want to make sure it's matrilineal. And that is probably it. I suppose we might want to have uh, maybe a maximum age difference. Maybe make them no other, older than 45. A lot of characters here, guys. Uh, so let's go with alliance power. And then, again, what we're looking for is somebody who we can do the matrilineal marriage with who isn't likely to succeed, and that's the reason why they're going to do the matrilineal marriage. So if we looked at, like, the uh, the king of, of Sweden here, now, which son is this? Prince Bjorn. Where is he at? Huh. Is he not his son? Did I look at that wrong? No, no. This is him. Uh, maybe there's just too many kids here. Because uh, I'm not seeing him. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's how far down he is. Wow. Uh, so we'd have to kill a lot of people. <laughs> we'd have to kill a lot of people to get him on the throne. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is get uh, somebody of our dynasty onto a kingdom. Uh, so that way, we'll get more renown each month. Uh, but, again, we need to do it where we can we can kill our way to the top uh, for our, our new uh, son-in-law. This is a lot of people who'd have to kill, so probably not the best one. Uh, it looks like there's actually a older son here. Okay, uh, so he would work. Oh, and here's another one. Uh, this guy right here. Uh, he, he's the, the oldest one of the ones that doesn't have uh, a spouse yet. So wh why are so many of these princes unmarried? Uh, is there, like, a lack of marriageable women in Denmark? Uh, or I don't know if they just don't want to marry, but I assume they have a lack of women, man. Uh, they can't can't find wives. So we're going to help him out. And and since he's the oldest one, and he seems like a great guy, trusting, compassionate, forgiving. Wow. This is, is a really nice dude, man. Oh, he's a legitimized bastard. So that means he still can't inherit. Uh, he just has some penalties there. Uh, but yeah, I kind of feel like he's a fantastic fit. Yeah, much better than this guy here. Cynical, brave, paranoid, also a legitimized bastard. Oh, good God. Look at all these. Are they all bastards? They're all bastards. Is even the heir a bat? They are. What is this guy has got... What, are they all with different women? That's what I'm really curious. If, if they're all with different women. He's had uh, two spouses. Has he had any children with these spouses? Okay, the first one he didn't. I know this is not important to look at, but I'm curious. And this one he didn't either. He doesn't have any children with his with his spouses. That's interesting. He just has a, a bunch of bastards that he had with uh, lovers, I guess. Okay, uh, so this is the guy that we're going to arrange the marriage with. This flamboyant trickster. He's a, he's a trickster. He's very tricky. Uh, and that's who we're going to arrange the marriage with. And then we'll see if we can't get him onto the throne with this matrilineal marriage. So she's going to gain 100 prestige. She's going to gain 200. And this will be an alliance with, with uh, Denmark. We already have an alliance with them, though, so it doesn't affect anything. Let's go ahead and send that off, which is good because I don't want to increase the number of allies we have. And when he accepts that... Alright, fantastic. So, now we need to help move the prince up in life. We need to give him a better position. And so we need to get rid of the heir. Let me make sure that's the heir. Uh, it looks like he is not the immediate heir. Yeah, Harold is not. This guy is. Uh, uh, Svensson. So he's the one we're going to remove first. This plot to murder him. Not a very high chance of success. A 12% chance of success. With a 27% chance that we are going to be discovered. Uh, it's 27% chance of secrecy. Excuse me. Not 27% chance that we're going to be discovered. I, I worded that wrong. 27% chance of secrecy. So we will likely be discovered. So we need to get some agents in here to increase this. Uh, we do have the money for it. And another thing we could do 
is find out where he is at. This would be another way to do this. Uh, okay, he's over here, but where's his, his land? All right, so here's his main land, right there. Uh, so that's where he's at. Got it. Uh, so what we want to do is get our spy master and attempt to find secrets here. If we find secrets on uh, any characters, then we can force them to become our agents, uh, you know, against against him. Uh, so that's the plan. We'll see if this ends up working or not. And I, I do think this is his main title, right? Yeah, we wanted to make sure it's his his main one. Okay, excellent. So we'll go there, try and find secrets. Uh, and this would take two years, so that gives us time to find secrets. Uh, but if we have any really good ones that aren't too expensive, uh, 170, good god. Uh, but that would increase it by a lot. Success chance goes up by quite a bit. Uh, this one gives us more scheme power, so it makes it go faster. Uh, but doesn't increase the success chance as much. Uh, but is a bit cheaper. I'm trying to save some money here. 90 over here. Um, that would be... Yeah, it's not going to increase it as much. Alright, well what we really want to do is increase the success chance. So I'm going to pay off... Oh wait, this is his... Is this one of his brothers? No, no, I think he just looks like his brother. Okay. They just look similar. They have the same helmet. They confuse me. We'll pay this guy off. Because that will drastically increase it. And that'll be it. Yeah, we don't even really need to divine secrets now. Uh, that was such a, a big jump there. Uh, we did get the Marshall perk. Excellent. Uh, let's see what we want to get next. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and start working on these ones now. Uh, we don't. We're not hiring any mercenaries. Uh, so that's not going to be as helpful. Eventually, we'll have to get it. Uh, but let's go this way now. Well, because you got some good good bonuses here. Uh, so let's get a man's home. Controlled territory defender advantage. Plus five. All right, excellent. Uh, so next uh, conflict, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that once we're ready to, to end the episode. We got a couple more minutes left, and then we're gonna end the episode, and I'll end it by talking about what the uh, the plan is, uh, what we're gonna be doing uh, when it comes to, to wars. Which again, we do have to stay at peace for a little bit. We gotta build up our, our levies. Again, We uh, uh, the numbers are a little bit low. Uh, Cecilia can marry again. What happened to her, her, uh, her husband? Did he die? I mean, he must have died. Oh, he was slain. You slain battle. All right, how unfortunate. So this is Prince Eric. Where was he at in his sons? See, he's he's 23. Okay, so he was one of the younger sons. Uh, perhaps the second youngest. That's what it looks like. Oh man, he's got so many kids. No, third youngest. All right, so, uh, and and I did say that that guy's name was, was Sven's son, but that's that's all their names because of course they're the sons of of Sven. Uh, so his, he's Eric, the guy that we're trying to kill. I think it's actually Knud. Yeah, I think it's Knud, if I'm not mistaken. We'll take a look real quick. Yeah, Knud. Uh, that's what I should have called him. But anyway, uh, it's good that we have this, this marriage over here because, you know, now that, that her, uh, husband is dead, that did, uh, would have broke our alliance with them. Uh, so our alliance can continue because of that marriage. Excellent. Uh, so with her, we're going to have to arrange another marriage for, uh, for her. We'll do that next episode try and find her a spouse uh, but overall uh, things went well there uh, and again I do think that, like this has a very good chance of succeeding here uh, so this should result in maybe we should start planning whoa let me click on that maybe we should start planning for the next brother uh, because we have such good chance here I think that's exactly what we're gonna do uh, so the next heir would probably be this guy uh, we, we don't know that for sure uh, but I, th I think it'd be this guy here. So what we should do is, well, we're almost done with it. So we'll finish it up. Uh, but next, we'll move the move him over to here and try and find secrets on this brother in preparation to kill him as well. Uh, so that's the plan for the next episode. Uh, and I did say I was going to mention what we're going to be doing next when it comes to foreign relations, uh, you know, outside of uh, intrigue. Uh, as soon as we get our numbers up, we're going to declare war. And I think we're going to declare war on Scotland, uh, King Duncan II. Uh, now, I don't know if we have any claims here. Uh, we can seize this, the rest of this earldom here uh, because he's that last county. Uh, so I think that's that's probably what we'll do. Uh, we could also try and get a claim. Uh, that would be one option as well. But I think we should get this one first. That makes the most sense. So, yeah, we'll we'll try and seize that, uh, that county against Scotland. Now, as far as how many troops he has, he has... 2100 uh, plus an ally that has about 400 so we could easily defeat him with our current troop numbers 
So I suppose there's not really any reason to wait. Yeah, maybe we'll just go ahead and declare war in the beginning of the next episode and expand our lands in Scotland. And then we'll have a truce with them. And uh, in the meantime, we can, I suppose, invade into to Wales and try and extend our influence there. Uh, somebody asked me what our uh, like long-term goals for the campaign are. You can't really say in a roleplay series, guys, because it, it's going to be largely based off of the characters. Uh, here, as King William, we're ambitious, we're diligent, we're brave. So we're obviously going to go to war. Uh, we're going to be attacking other countries, trying to expand our lands. But playing as another character, we could be in a very different situation. And so we'll, we'll base our, our goals off of what that character wants to do. Uh, so I can say that a long-term goal personally is, of course, to try and extend our rule over all the British Isles, as well as to expand our lands in France. Uh, but you know when we do that and, and whether we do that will be entirely based off of the, the characters that we play as uh, But for right now uh, that'll be our goal uh, so we're going to try and uh, conquer that territory in Scotland while we also try and put a member of our dynasty on the throne of Denmark uh, so that's uh, the plan for next episode hope you guys did enjoy this one if you did make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe to our channel hit that notification bell and leave a comment I do hope to see you guys on the next episode and thanks for watching